Welcome everyone back to another Minecraft video. So as you can see today we are doing something slightly different to what um, I usually do as in uh, my survival world. But today we'll be, well, we'll be teaching you how to make an iron farm. Now this iron farm, you know, there are loads of, uh, whoa there's a village here. That's interesting. But there are loads of uh, iron farms or iron farm tutorials out here. But this one is my own one. It is more reliable. It's also easier to modify and it works in both Java Edition and Bedrock Edition. Now, the Bedrock Edition I haven't properly tested yet, but the mechanics, I've, I've learned the mechanics or tried to learn the mechanics and it does appear to be, you know, easily incorporated into this design. So let's just uh, do this quickly. Right. So I'm uh, set up here a few of the resources you'll need to make this iron farm now. In survival world, this isn't really the end game stuff. You can probably do this in intermediate game. And it's a reliable way of getting iron. So if you put this in your spawn trunk, then you'll be getting um, a lot of iron. Now, whether it's the most efficient way of getting iron or not, I'm not too sure. But you can get maybe, let's say, around about 100 iron per hour. So that's an hour you can spend exploring or building or so on. And all that time, you're just getting iron um, into your chest. So... So I'm also feeling a little ill, as you can hear, my nose is a little blocked. But, let's get started into the building materials. So this is the villager and zombie area. These are materials that you will need. Cobblestone, carpet, fences. And this is where it gets interesting. So, of course, I'll explain this a lot more later, as we're going to get into it. But, you will need, for Java Edition, a minimum of five villagers. And for... Uh, bedrock edition is slightly more complicated, but you will need 10 villages for that, at least 10, and also you'll need 21 doors. Now, in addition to this, you'll need beds, so you have 5 beds here, but it's a bed for each villager, and also a workstation for each villager. So, again, if you're doing bedrock edition, you'll need more. Now, for bedrock edition as well, you'll also need a bell, which actually doesn't go in here, it goes in here. This is a good time, actually, to go into the, the iron golem spawning area. Now, what you will need for this is cobblestone, fence, fence gate, and two buckets of water. Now, you'll actually need more than two buckets of water, but you can make there an infinite water supply, and then you can just keep reusing your buckets and um, getting water. Now, the killing area, you will need cobblestone, water. Again, this is just, you can do the infinite water supply trick. Now, this is then the collecting spot, or where you, sorry, you lay kill iron golems, and then you collect the iron. Now there are many many methods of doing this. I found the best one that I prefer is the magma block and the minecart with the hopper and the rails and then hopper in the chest. That is um, the most the least resource intensive way and also magma blocks don't destroy items and the minecart with the hopper collects them quickly. Okay, so let's get started into building this. Okay, so first of all what you need to do is you need to collect your scaffolding. So obviously in creative I don't necessarily need scaffolding but it might be easier for me just to show you um, how things are done. Now if we go in here and you just build up scaffolding. Now you want to make this relatively high just because villagers have a particular set of like a uh, routine let's say when they are about to spawn an iron golem and one thing they check is how uh, if there's an iron golem close by because if there's an iron golem close by they don't um, spawn in another one. So this is probably you know, a little bit uh, too high for your average survival world, but this can do, this will do for our, uh, you know, tutorial here. So next up, what you need, I'm not going to go back and forward, I'm just going to get what I need. So next up, what you need is your cobblestone. Now, cobblestone, what you want to make is both a zombie running around area in the middle and a zombie area, uh, sorry, yeah, and a villager area around the side. So, what I do is I have a... 25 by 25 square and then after that we can build on from there so 25 by 25 square is simply middle block 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 11 12 and then here 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 11 12 so around 24 here 1 2 3 4 okay and so on and so forth so i'm going to build this for you and um, then I'll return back. Okay, so as you can see, I've built my uh, uh, 25 by 25 platform now. 25 by 25, it's not like a, actually I might need that later. 
it's not a set size you can have it really any size but that's the size that um, you know is doable um, within a survival world so now what you're going to do is you're going to take some fence I should have taken another brick just to make it exciting and you're going to um, outline the edge of where your villages are going to be so here we're going to do obviously the outside and then you're going to be doing the uh, inside as well so and let me just do that quickly and uh, I'll get okay so I've done the outside of the fencing now what you want to be doing is then you want to be making the inside fencing so you can't just put it anywhere you need to make sure that you have a fair bit of space between the inside and the outside for at least one bed and not just a bed right next to the fence because otherwise the village will just jump off so you have to have a bed here and a bed here and then you can make again a fence on the other side and this is around about the you know this space that the villagers should have um, when uh, they are you know moving around so this is I think not enough for a bed so it should be here so this should be the corner of the fence of the sorry the inside fencing so I'm just going to do this quickly and then um, I'll cut back. Okay, so we have done the village area. This is now not yet finished, but we will come back to this in a while. So what we're going to do now is going to take our scaffolding and going to go up a few more blocks. Now, again, with this isn't really required amount. How many blocks needs to be higher up? But not too many. I think is it. I think it might be 16. But I'm not too sure. I think it might be 16 blocks up high that the, the villager can actually spawn in Iron Golem. So. Round about, you know, one more, if you get one more, that should be fine. Now, this is where your iron golems can spawn. Now, we'll talk about iron golems spawning later on, but what you want here is simply nice, you know, 5x5 five five little square. And what you then want to do is you want to uh, make sure that that is covered on all sides. Um, sorry, first of all, you want to cover two sides by your fence gates, uh, fence posts rather, so like this. And then obviously you want to do the other side. Let me just do that quickly. There we go. And then what you want is you want your whoops. You want your uh, fence gate. So let me just get the fence gate quickly. Here we go. And you want those to be you no know, right next to no right, that's wrong fence gate. Whoops. There's my nether, of course, yeah. You don't actually have another fence gate, do you? And that was me being silly. But you want your fence gates connected like this. Obviously, it's kind of tricky because you need to shift whilst um, adding them. But like this. Come on, come on, game. Okay. And all of them to be open. Of course, it doesn't really matter which side they're open. And then you want to do that to the other side. So, again, one, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. Now you notice this part looks a little bit like uh, I believe it's Dockem's um, um, uh, Dockem's uh, Come on man uh, His uh, iron farm But uh, yeah this is about it really um, All the similarity there is between this uh, and Dockem's iron farm This spawning area And now we're going to be doing even more things with it as well So then what we want to be doing is a line of water sources here And this essentially is this essentially means rather that iron golems once they spawn in will fall to the side through the fence gates and down into your killing zone which we'll work on just now so then after that what you want to be doing is you want to kind of extend the brick uh, the brick fence so you want to be doing it you know a few blocks high a few blocks along one two three yeah three blocks should be fine and then again on this side one two three and one, two, and three. After that, this is nearly finished. Of course, we'll come back to this later for yet yeah, another thing. Wait, have I? Oh dear. Right, I made a little error, but I'll quickly fix that and I'll get back. Okay, so now what you want to be doing is go on to your zombie, zombie rather, running around area. So, first of all, whilst this is the zombie platform, it will be quite bad for the zombie and for you as well if the um, if the iron golems fell through here and then just fell into the platform and killed the zombies. So what you want to be doing is you want to be checking around about where 
the oh, I should put a command, command block for that but you want to be checking around about where um, the iron golems will fall and then break the blocks there just to make sure the iron golem falls all the way through now not me now uh, you can do also is you can also break one to the side just in case the iron golem wants to fall somewhere inconvenient for you um, but of course um, if you wish to do that go ahead now what you're doing essentially is you're trying to make sure that the iron golem only well, we'll talk about where the iron golem is to spawn but you want it to spawn in here but then when it falls down not to be caught on anything because then what will happen is either it will uh, kill the zombie and then you have to get another zombie and that takes time and effort and slash or it uh, you know it stays here and the village is this there's an iron golem and didn't spawn in anymore and thus your farm is broken so what you're going to do is simply just break here and then keep breaking and just to make sure again like I said the iron golem falls right in into uh, your killing area at the bottom now I think we need one more here Now you might have noticed in my survival world, uh, this iron farm isn't exactly the same dimensions as um, that one, but this is, like I said, kind of an improvement version. So uh, essentially all the stuff I've learned from making it in survival, all the trial and error, you know, perfected here. So now we've done this, what we're going to do is we're also going to fence the zombie area. Now the zombies, for some reason, I thought they had insurgent pathfinding, that they weren't just run down and, you know drop a very high height and die but just in case what you want to be doing is just putting fences around here to ensure that the zombies do not just fall down there and die so now we've done this what's next now we need to furnish the villager area so now we'll require beds and also you know some form of workstation now you want like i said at least five uh, five villages but um, you can have more if you want but make sure they each have a bed and they each have a uh, workstation now I put my beds and workstations on opposite ends just because that means that the villagers need to move around a little bit and so they're constantly looking at the zombie but also not staying still they're moving around the zombie needs to follow them and track them and can only follow one and then other villagers are free to also look at the zombie and We'll talk about that more later because it goes into the mechanics. I'm going to explain the mechanics later on in the video. But for now, what we've done is we have... Let me just double check. What we've done is we've completed, or nearly completed, where the villagers are going to be the villager area, the zombie area, and the iron golem spawning area. Now, you might have noticed I bought uh, I put carpets in the required uh, materials. That's because... Iron golems, we want them to limit. We want to limit their spawning area to here only, because if they spawn in anywhere, then no more iron golems will spawn. Because the villagers will notice that there's already been an iron golem uh, around them. So what you want to be doing is you want to carpet up the whole of this area, but not only this. You want to also carpet up the fence posts. Now, I'm not too sure that this is necessary or not, but if you read the wiki, iron golems have kind of a more I won't say buffed spawn uh, system, but they can spawn on things like half slabs, transparent blocks, like glass, as long as there's a block underneath, but they can't spawn in on carpets. So just in case, you should put carpets not only in the village area, but also in the zombie area. So let me just do that quickly, and then I will uh, get Just back. quickly, uh, I think I may have actually put this too far out this way, because what I've noticed is in my spy world, iron gums can sometimes spawn in here, travel nicely, and then just fall here so that's definitely definitely too uh, close in so if you just need to move this back slightly a little bit over here just so the iron golems as they fall they fall right into your killing area down below now something else what might be nice or what might also work is removing the blocks underneath the fence posts but since we're going to be placing down uh, carpets on top of the fence post it doesn't really make any sense to do that because I mean the whole point of that is or moving the blocks underneath the fence post is that if the iron golems fall in they will I mean there's a small chance they fall in on the fence post but there's a higher chance of falling on the block underneath it which could obviously be bad news for the zombie so what I'm going to be doing now is I'm just going to finish carpeting up and then I will cut back okay so I finished carpeting up and as you can see, I also carpeted up the 
um, workstation as well because I believe they count as solid blocks. So now what we're going to be doing is we're going to be starting work on the killing area. So first of all you want to make sure that you know which orientation your get rid of this. You know, want to know which orientation um, the iron golems are going to be falling in because there's no need, there's no point in making a killing area that in this direction where our facing goes from left to right when the iron golems can spawn are spawning from in front and behind or at least they're falling down from in front and behind so first of all you want to be able to see around about um, where the iron golems are falling from so this is around about, uh, let's see, so that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine so you want to give you like give yourself one block of extra spaces because the iron golems can move laterally as they're falling down. So if we go from this block here, she just go from the center block. So we'll work on the center block later. Um, if we go from here, that is 150, 185. If we just fall, so here, this is going to be the leftmost boundary, or you know the left or right most wall of the farm of the killing area rather and then you want to do I think 11 11 blocks away so that's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11 and then this is going to be the right most boundary let me just break away all of this uh, cobblestone now you also then want to check out where the middle point is so that is essentially exact middle of where your farm is going to be, or rather, where it's going to, uh, where the what do you call it, iron golem is going to spawn. In. So I've noticed it's slightly off center. This isn't it, but oh well. So this is going to be center, which is let me just uh, here's F three. Here's F three. That is um, uh, one forty four, one eighty nine. So let me just go down there and go to one forty four. 189 so exactly here now you then what you want to do is you want to essentially go back out around 10 blocks and place down your water buckets well, actually first of all what you want to be doing is actually um, putting down your walls to contain the water so let's go down 10 blocks 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 and 11 here and just build along, make sure you have your boundary and you have your walls. So again, quite simple. And if you just break this, keep the center block obviously, and then just keep um, uh, working along just so you, you finish doing the walls. So I'm going to finish doing my walls and then get back to you. Okay, so I have done the walls with the boundaries of the killing area. Now what I want is a nice water bucket. Here we go. And I'm going to put down water on uh, each of the, uh, along the wall basically, like this. Now of course if you only have two water buckets because you're in survival, what you can do is you can put, um, let me show you the trick, if you put one water bucket here and then one not next to it but to its, uh, two to its right or left or forward or backwards, the middle one will also be a water source. So if you keep connecting from the middle you have an infinite water supply. And that's basically if you want to save water buckets or going up and down etc also want to be putting down water buckets along the side um, of the uh, of this one as well so then what you want to be doing is you want to be putting down uh, water buckets along this middle here so this, what this essentially does is it uh, oops I think I did it slightly wrong let me break this what's gone wrong? can I not put one here? Here we go. So what this does basically is it um, collects any iron gums, anything coming in from the side here and pushes it down into the middle into here. So this is where you actually want your magma blocks to be. So let me get some magma block. Okay, come on. And to break it here. Now this is not only where your magma blocks are going to be, but also below is where your minecarts are going to be, or your rails with your minecart and hopper. And then also you're going to connect that to a hopper and they're going to connect that to a chest, preferably a double chest but obviously I mean, a chest will work fine. So if you then put down a, uh, sorry about that, so, so if you then put down magma blocks, uh, actually first of all you want to might, you might want to uh, get yourself a chest and 
a hopper. There we go. And simply, let me just give myself, actually, you know, you want uh, that block. Give myself a bit of space to work. So you put down your double chest first. Maybe like this. And then connect your hopper to it just by shift clicking or shifting and then clicking like this. And then what you want to be doing is putting down your tracks. So rail, powered rail, so then you can actually, uh, you know, your minecart keeps going, it doesn't stop. And then simply place down a, actually, a normal track here. And then just keep it circling around. Yep. Obviously it might be a bit tricky just making sure you have it in a good orientation so you actually, your track does go all the way around but, you know, with a bit of trial and error uh, you make it work. Now of course it doesn't have to be um, strictly, let me just, uh, wait, no it doesn't obviously have to be strictly um, uh, following the where the magma box are, it doesn't have to be exactly below it. You can mess around with it a little bit just to make sure that your minecart uh oh dear. Oops. Just make sure that your minecart uh goes around all over all under the magma box and over the hopper as well, which in here is also over a magma block. So let me just work on the minecart and then I'll get back to you. <laughs> 